Okay, now uh, we're going to go on to another principle here, which I really like. And that is the idea of cultivating something that I call core confidence. So I'm basically going to make a distinction here. Okay, we're going to a new area, which is the distinction between core confidence and situational confidence. So what are the differences there? All right. Well, I want you to think of a situation where you feel very, very confident. Okay. Um, let's say that you just got a brand new haircut and you got some new shirt and you're walking down the street and you feel really, really good and someone looks at you. You know, what do you think to yourself? You're probably like, damn, I look good. They think I'm hot, you know, right? Or something like that, you know? <laughs> uh, you know, that would be an example where because the situation, because what, you're, because what you're wearing, for example, it gives you an extra little bit of confidence. Um, think of another example. Let's say that you're throwing a party and it's your party and you feel really, really good at your party and everyone keeps coming up to you like, man, this party is awesome, dude. This party is amazing, right? You're like, wow, thanks, right? Let's say girls are coming up to you, right? This party's so good. Thank you so much, <laughs> right? See the look on his face? He already feels really good, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, and then, and so everyone says, wow, you know, you're, you're running this great party. Or let's say that you're doing something where you feel very good at what you do. You're just really, really good at it. Think of anything that you're really, really good at. And in that situation, uh, you know, you just feel awesome. Or think of when you have all your friends and family around you. You have a lot of loved ones around you. You feel really, really awesome. Now, now let's imagine, let's imagine this. Let's imagine that you're dressed amazing. You got a new haircut. You got all your friends and family around you. You're running a party and you're doing something you're really good at. How good are you going to feel? Pretty awesome, right? So that's pretty cool. <laughs> But the question that I would ask you is why can you, if it's just an emotion, and emotions really are generated from within, why can we not feel that way most of the time? Well, it's because a lot of the times our confidence is based on the situation. It's not based on a core value within ourselves. Um, now, part of that is a good thing, right? I mean, it makes sense that you'd be more confident in certain situations than others. And there's reasons for that. But you generally, you generally want to shift that confidence to something I would call core value. It's basically a belief that you have value inherently. Just, you have value. You're a person of value. You're a man or woman of value. And that's it. I want you to think of it like you have kind of like a thermometer. Okay, like this. And basically, you know, usually maybe you're somewhere around there, wherever you are, based in your own personal range. And that's whatever emotional state that you're in. And what your brain is going to do is it's going to ping off of the environment. It looks at the environment and it looks at things like how well do you fit in? Uh, how much authority do you have in the environment? How many alliances and different people who you know are in the environment? And then what it does is it gives you a certain amount of confidence, a certain amount of state. It's almost like a chemical that's in your brain and uh, it actually gives it to you. And the reason why it does this is very interesting. Uh, but it actually goes back to like the caveman times. So if you want to actually understand your emotions and why you do what you do, a lot of the time you can look at evolutionary history. You can look at like how you were as a caveman. Uh, so when we look at this nice room here, we're sitting here in Cisco, we got you know, some fluorescent lights and uh, you know, a nice, nice table right here. Blackberry, you don't mind if I borrow this? Check my e email. That'd be bad. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like we live in modern society, right? And we take this for granted. Uh, but how long have human beings really lived in modern society for? A hundred years. Yeah, like a hundred years, right? Even if you go back as far as a thousand years ago, humanity was in a dark age. You know what the dark age is? We were human beings in Europe were living in such poverty. Basically, just it was, it was basically just like little farms of people, like just eating practically nothing. There was almost no, uh, there was almost no like uh, books or anything like that. In fact, one of the ways that the books were preserved from Rome was that the church did it. Actually, the church saved a lot of our literature and things like that. We were in a dark age. Um, before that, if you go back ten or twenty thousand years ago, we lived in tribes. Now, if you're in a tribe, let's say that you're let's say that you're in, in your tribe, and then you see some other tribe where you don't know anybody. And you go in there, and you're like, hey, <laughs> what's up, man? How you doing? It's crazy. Like that, right? What's, gonna ha what's the other people in the tribe? There's no law. They're not gonna, what are they going to do? They're going to take a rock? Yeah, yeah they're going to go, ah, boom, and you're dead, okay? And they're not going to get in trouble. They're probably just going to eat you or something. <laughs> So, so we have this emotion to stop us from doing that. We have these emotions so that when we go into the other, don't worry, I'm not going to, okay? I'm, I'm good, I'm good, okay? <laughs> Sorry, man. 
Sorry, dude. All right. So you know when you go into when you go into. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right. So okay. Uh, How's your social conditioning now? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. So when you okay, so you go into the other tribe. And um, and what and what would happen is basically if, if you're in a new environment it would it would make my brain say don't do that because he'll kill me, so it actually lowers my confidence. And what would happen is my voice would get more like hey what's up like hey how's it yeah awesome <laughs> <laughs> like that right it makes you more shy. Uh, it does that to help you. That's, that's to help you. It, it means that you won't go into like environments where you don't have authority and status and do something stupid. And human beings that did not have that power. They got killed, and they didn't have babies. And because they didn't have babies, you didn't evolve that, that characteristic. The human beings that actually had a natural, healthy fear of foreign environments, they had more kids, they had us, and that's why our personalities have this, this device where if we feel very confident, we become open, our voices open up, our body language becomes loose, we just relax, we can joke around, we can be at ease. But when we're in an environment where we don't feel authority, we kind of shut down, we, it, we call it like, sti I call it stifled, okay? I call it stifling. So think of it like if you have a, uh, a cup, so maybe I could steal the outside cup of this. Uh, think of it like you have a cup, it's almost like this thing that kind of stifles you in. It holds you, it holds you from expressing yourself, right? You can't express yourself. Whereas when you're unstifled, you can be, you can be more expressive. Um, so here's what's interesting about that emotional device that we have in terms of our confidence. <laughs> that emotional device is not that relevant anymore. It's sometimes important, but at the same time, if you, got, if you go into a... Uh, uh, someone, okay, you, you're, you go in, is it called a contractor? What is it that these people that hire you, what are they called? Customers. A customer. Okay, let's say that you go to a customer's place, right? And you want to help them as much as you can. You want to do a great job. And you want to communicate with confidence. Is that customer going to take a rock at your head? And say, I don't like your job! <laughs> like that. Is that likely to happen? Does that happen to anyone here? No? Okay. <laughs> Hasn't happened yet? Okay. <laughs> Maybe next week. Okay. Very close. Mm -hmm. Now, but what's interesting, what's ironic about confidence, here's, here's the irony about it, is that actually when you're less, see, what, what could happen is that they don't want to work with you anymore or they might not like the work that you do. That would probably be like a worst case scenario. Uh, but what's interesting about it is that by going in there with like a low confidence, that's actually not going to make them like your work more. You know, if you're like, hey, I did this for you. Like that, that's not going to make that's not going to make them like it more. So ironically, that same thing that's meant to make you be more like you know polite and submissive, a lot of the time it actually takes away from the power of what it is that you're doing. So generally speaking, in terms of your state, you want to shift that sort of criteria, the criteria that you have in your mind that lets you go into that good, positive, like confident emotional state. You want to shift that internally so that it is a core confidence. The way that you want to think of it is like you have value purely because it comes from you, okay? Just like I have value, right? And also you want to you want to believe that you have value because of your technical expertise. You know more, no, <laughs> well maybe in that particular situation but I see what you're saying. I think in general confidence you want to have, you want to believe that you have value because it comes from you and in situations where you know the most and you're bringing the most to the table, it's like look, I know the most here. I trust myself. It's a self-trust.